Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I hope that you all are enthusiastic to learn something new today. So let's begin today's video wherein you will definitely get to learn something new. But before that, let me inform you guys that we have launched the live courses for all these courses, RBS, Abhi and Abad. And you can check out these courses on our mobile application. You can download it from the Google Play Store. So guys, before discussing the questions, let me inform you that uh, this is our mobile number where you can call us from Monday to Saturday, 9 to 6 p.m. It is not always that you have problems related to the academics only. Sometimes our personal issues or something that is there that is hindering our uh, preparation is also there. So you can directly contact with us. You can seek our guidance in your preparation and try to clear your examination. We are not here only to sell our course. No, guys, that is not our agenda. Our agenda is to help you out. So if you really need help, then seek it out from us on this, uh, on this number, OK? 9 to 6, Monday to Saturday. This is our website. You can go through the website. Uh, you can know more about us. This is the mail ID if you don't have time to call us, you can write a mail to us as well. We have discussions.anujindal.in, the website where you can uh, where you can ask your queries, post your queries there, we will directly uh, answer them. One more thing that is there, that is the Telegram channel. The PDF of this session is there on the Telegram. Download it, keep it beside you and then try to learn what I'm teaching you. Now let's begin with the first question. So here, which state has launched the single-use plastic buyback scheme to inculcate a habit among the youngsters towards environment conservation? So here you have the five options out of which Himachal Pradesh guys is the right answer. Now what is the basic idea of this scheme? Single-use plastic bring back policy or bring back scheme. So under this scheme basically school children are being targeted. School children would be encouraged to bring the single-use plastic from their homes to the school uh, and submit it in the school and in return they will get rupees 75 per kg from the government. So that is the basic idea to inculcate a healthy habit among the students so that they would be uh, cautious against the single-use plastics. That is the basic idea. Now regarding the plastics, we have the Global Plastics Treaty that is in the making right now. UN is creating the framework for this. But can anyone of you tell me the year by which it will be completed? The timeline that UN has itself given out for completing this framework. This is your first question, do tell me. Moving ahead, which state is experimenting with a siren system to reduce human elephant encounters? Kerala. Karnatak, Assam, Odisha, Tamil Nadu are in the options. So here guys, the right answer is Odisha. Now what is it? Basically a siren system has been installed on the national highways in the state of Odisha so that the vehicles can be cautioned whenever a herd of the elephants is uh, passing through the national highway. So that is the basic idea. Now regarding the uh, elephant protection only, we have we have project at the national level being run by KVIC, the Khadi and Village Industries Commission. So this rehab stands for reducing elephant human attacks using bees. So basically under this project, beehives are installed along the railway tracks so that the herd of the elephants can be shooed away by using the bees whenever the train is coming. So that is the basic idea of this project, which was launched in 2021 and Karnataka became the first state to implement this project in 2021. And recently in 2022, Assam became the second state. So it is a very current news. It can also be asked in your upcoming NABAD examination, okay? Because animal husbandry and wildlife is one of the many important topics that are there in your ARD section. Now, one more thing of importance is that elephant guys is the state animal of Karnataka. That is why the rehab project was firstly launched in the state and this is a fun activity for all of you. Here in this picture you can see different uh, emblems of the state and if you know you can name them in the comment section as well. So that was a fun activity that I thought to conduct with you. So here we have the third question. Where are the new reserves of uranium found in India? So out of these five districts, Sikar district, which is in Rajasthan is the right answer. So basically, 
prior to this discovery, Jharkhand and Andhra Pradesh were the two main sources of uranium in India. Now, with this new discovery, Rajasthan has become the third state to have uranium reserves. Okay. So, recently, Rajasthan has also written a letter of intent to the Uranium Corporation of India to start the extraction of this ore in the state. Okay. And now, understand it. First of all, I hope that you all know that we have the National Nuclear Suppliers Group in the world, which is a grouping of more than 40 uranium rich countries. So these countries basically control the supply of uranium. India is really trying its hard, hardest luck to enter into this grouping, but obviously the arc rival of ours, China, is blocking our entry into it. Therefore, the only uranium that we have access to is the uranium that is there on our land, that is Andhra Pradesh, Jharkhand and now Rajasthan. So that makes it all the more important because from strategic point of view, from defense point of view, nuclear weapons are one of the pillars of our strength, okay? But from humanity and from environment point of view, definitely this would not be that much of a good news because obviously nuclear weapons are not very good for the humans. Secondly, for the environment also, the mining is not very good until or unless it is done sustainably. So that is the news all about. Now let's have some facts related to uranium as well. So the world's largest producers of uranium are Kazakhstan, Canada and Australia. Whereas the countries which have the largest reserves are Niger, Russia, Namibia, Uzbekistan, US and Ukraine. Now understand this basic difference. The countries which are producing the uh, uranium and the countries which have the highest or the largest reserves. Same is the case with lithium as well. I hope you must have heard about the ABC triangle. Argentina, Bolivia and Chile, these three countries are the large, the countries with the highest reserves of lithium in the world. But who is the largest producer? It is Australia. So having the largest reserves is one thing and supplying it to the world is another thing. Therefore, you can see these many countries having the largest reserves, but the suppliers are these countries. Okay? Now guys, this is the uranium and these are some of the uses like medicines, defense, photography, etc, etc. So out of these many uses, we all know that uranium is very much needed in which of these products. It is obviously weapons and nuclear electricity generation as well. The next question is, which of the following countries have joined in the Commonwealth group? So here guys, option D is the right answer. Gabon and Togo have joined it. But here is a very special thing about this news. These two countries have nothing to do with Britain. Commonwealth is a grouping which has all the past colonies of Britain. Okay, India is also a member of this Commonwealth grouping and I don't understand why all these countries are carrying the baggage of their colonial past even in the present. That is something incomprehensible for me, but that is the fact. So this is the Commonwealth group of countries of more than 50 countries and Gabon and Togo have become the 55th and 56th member of this grouping. So by default, total 56 members are there in this grouping. And even at this moment, in the present, in 2022, Britain's Queen Elizabeth II is leading or is heading this Commonwealth grouping. So ultimately, the power or we can say the soft power is with the Britain itself, now, even today. And this decision to include these countries was taken at this meeting. Okay. And here guys, you can see the location of Togo and Gabon. So this is Gabon, this is Togo and this is the zoomed in version of it. Moving ahead, which edition of BRICS summit was organized in 2022? So it was the 14th edition. Editions are always important, do cover them. So it was convened under Chinese presidency and Beijing declaration was adopted. So there are some of the key highlights that I wanted to discuss with you about this Beijing uh, declaration. First is that it talks about the talks, peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. Second is that it says terrorism should not be associated with any religion, nationality, civilization or ethnic group. Third is that it adopts 
comprehensive convention on international terrorism so these are some of the important highlights of the uh, bijan declaration moving ahead which of the following countries are not members of the partners in the blue pacific initiative so here guys partners is in the blue pacific initiative is basically a us led informal group formed to uh, increase or enhance its uh, power in the pacific ocean that is the basic idea of this partners in the pacific ocean initiative now the countries which are not the mem the country which is not a member of this initiative is india geographically uh, speaking so obviously india is, does not come in the pacific ocean india is not located or surrounds the pacific ocean therefore india is not a member of it apart from india all these countries are in the pacific okay so it is basically an informal grouping created to enhance the uh, monitoring and cooperation in the pacific ocean now guys us has a 5 5 4 policy or we can say formula to monitor this pacific region indo pacific region can any one of you comprehend this what is it so five stands for the five eyes alliance now which countries are members of it so uh, uk then you, we have australia new zealand us uh, and one more country is there canada okay so these countries and you can see that four countries are the foundering countries of the pacific ocean one is uk so these countries are the five eyes and under the five eyes alliance all the military intelligence agencies of these countries are cooperating so they have integrated with the uh, integrated their systems to keep a check over this region to counter china's expansionist policy that is the basic idea that is one initiative out of the 542 policy then four four stands for quad so in quad we have india we have australia we have japan and we have us then we have acha there is 5432 policy one more initiative which comes in three that is aukus so here you have australia you have us and you have uk so basically all these three countries are going to uk and us are going to help australia in developing submarines nuclear submarines so that it can tackle china's expansionist policy and lastly we come to two so it refers to the bilateral relations now we have one more initiative that is partners in the pacific ocean which we have already discussed so us is there australia new zealand japan is there and you have uk also in this initiative so let's move ahead sebi has allowed retail investors to apply for investing in public issue of reits and invits through upi for a value of up to dash so here rupees 5 lakh is the right answer the basic idea or the basic meaning of this news is that now sebi has allowed the retail investors uh, to invest in the reits that is real estate investment trust and invits infrastructure investment trust through upi as well okay whenever these uh, trust call for the money now the investors can invest can send their money by using the upi channel that is the basic meaning and the maximum limit for using upi is rupees 5 lakh apart from this one more new uh, we can say stance has been taken by sebi and that is to reduce the uh, we can say allotment time the trading cycle of this entire thing okay so the trading cycle has been reduced to 6 working days so in this trading cycle basically the allotment and listing of units is done after the issue is made so that time period was earlier 30 working days now it has been reduced to 6 working days moving ahead who has been appointed as the director general of ndbs uh, your ndb should be written ndbs india regional office in gujarat international Fin finance tech city so ndbs new development bank of bricks so here dj pandyan is the right answer 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हु हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड एज अ न्यू चेयरमैन ऑफ सेंट्रल बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्ट एक्सेस सो नितिन गुप्ता हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड सो ही इज नितिन गुप्ता हु हैज बिन अपॉइंटेड एज अ न्यू चीफ ऑफ द इंटेलिजेंस ब्यूरो सो हियर तपन देका इज द राइट आंसर सो ही इज द पर्सन हु वॉज अर्लियर द स्पेशल डायरेक्टर एट आई बी एंड नाउ ही इज द चेयरमैन and here guys this video and so i hope that you have liked the video if there are any suggestions anything that you want to share with us you can in the comment section below thank you so much have a good day